Hey everyone, welcome back to Polar Integrals, and I had to do a re-recording because my screen wasn't centered in the last recording. But uh, in this problem, uh, it's a book problem, it's number 47 from this section, uh, we are going to convert a Cartesian integral into a polar integral. So I haven't finished writing out this problem, but essentially we're given this integral, the double integral over the region R of the square root of x squared plus y squared dA, right? And the region is outside um, x squared plus y minus 1 squared is equal to 1. And uh, inside the semicircle, and I want to make sure that this problem is worded the way I think it is. Uh, it's inside the semicircle of radius 2. centered at the origin. Okay? So that's the problem we're given. We want to value this integral over this given region R. And how do we do that? Well, uh, when you have x squared plus y squareds, again, you should be triggered um, to use polar coordinates. And when you have regions that look like equations of circles, right? That looks like a circle. This guy literally, oh, this guy down here literally is a semicircle. Um, yeah, when you have circular regions, we always want to do polar coordinates, okay? So how do we want to do this? Well, to convert, uh, remember, we want x is equal to r cosine theta, y is equal to r sine theta. And we remember that x squared plus y squared was r squared cosine squared theta plus r squared sine squared theta. All right, if you factor out these r squareds, um, you get cosine squared plus sine squared, and so... Uh, x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared, and that's uh, something very important that we wanted to remember. So, so when I set up this double integral, then uh, so x becomes r cosine theta, y becomes r sine theta, and then now we got the double integral of the square root of r squared. All right, and remember what dA was, right? dA is r dr d theta. That's from the previous video. Okay, and so whenever you see dx dy right, dx dy always becomes r dr d theta, and same with dy dx, all right? Don't forget this r, right? This r right here is the reason why a lot of people miss points on polar integral problems is because when you convert from Cartesian to polar, uh, essentially there needs to be like a penalty term for switching coordinates, and we actually, we actually find out how to calculate this r we actually find out how to calculate this guy in 15.8, but for now, you're just going to have to blindly accept the fact that uh, when you go from uh, Cartesian to polar, during the conversion, uh, dx dy becomes r dr d theta, dy dx becomes r dr d theta, okay? So keep that in mind, and now this becomes a double integral. The square root of r is, r, the square root of r squared is r, and so now you get r squared um, dr d theta. Okay, and, 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 and what now? So now we need to set out the bounds, right? We need to set out the bounds of our integral. So let's draw the picture first. Let's draw, draw a picture, All right? So I got a semicircle with radius two. So if that's one, that guy can be two, okay? So semicircle radius two, here comes a terrible semicircle. Woo! Okay, <laughs> and now what's this guy, right? So that's the semicircle of radius two. Um, center at the origin, and we actually know what this guy is, right? This is actually just r equals 2, right? It's a semicircle of radius 2, so the equation is r equals 2. Um, and now we got this guy. x squared plus y minus 1 squared is equal to 1. And for you, uh, you guys should know that this is a circle with radius 1, right? Um, centered at, uh, at 0, comma, positive 1, right? And why is the radius 1? Well, it's, it, it, it's, it's the square root of that guy, right? The radius is the square root of the right-hand side. Remember, that's how we find the area of circles. Um, or the, or, yeah, so that's, how the, that's the circle equation, right? It's x squared plus y squared is equal to some um, radius squared, right? And in this case, it's 1. So when you have, like, 9 out here, um, the radius is equal to 3. Uh, r squared is equal to 9, okay? So just don't be, don't be a moron and mess that one up. Um, okay. 
enough for this side. So uh, that guy is a circle radius one at uh, zero comma one. And this is some high school uh, geometry shit that you guys should remember. So here we go. Oh boy, <laughs> not too bad. And then our region then is going to be inside the, the semicircle, but outside of the other circle, okay? So something like this. Um, cool, all right. So uh, that's gonna be our region. And now we gotta set up our bounds. So if we draw a radi radii through this region, which is what we always wanna do, right? We notice that we're gonna hit the semicircle first, and then we're gonna exit our region, r equals two. So that means for my upper bound, I can see that the upper bound is gonna be r equals two, right? But now we gotta find out what the semicircle guy is, right? We gotta find out what the equation of the semicircle is. And it's kind of hard because the semicircle has to be in the form r equals something, right? And, and right now it's x squared plus y squared is equal to one. Or, or, or this inside circle, right? Um, right now we got x squared um, plus, so this is the circle, the full circle, x squared plus y minus one squared is equal to one. So how do we convert this guy into r equals something, right? Because we need it, we need r equals something for the lower bound. We need it for this lower bound right here, right? Because again, as I hammered in in 15.2, um, the lower bound, since it corresponds to r, right, dr is the inside, this guy has to be explicitly just a single r on the left-hand side. So uh, how do I do this? Well, now we've got to plug in uh, x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta. So I get r squared, okay, let's do this in blue still. r squared cosine squared theta, so that's x squared, plus, so y minus 1 squared, um, ends up being y squared minus 2y plus 1, right? So this is r squared sine squared theta minus 2r sine theta plus 1 is equal to 1, okay? Again, I just expanded out the, uh, the, the y minus 1 squared, and then I plugged in y equals r sine theta, which is what we said it should be up here, and then... Now I get this term, all right? So r cosine theta plus r sine, r squared cosine theta plus r squared sine theta, we know that is r squared, all right? And then this becomes minus two r sine theta. And then if we move the one over, they kill each other. So that's equal to zero. And now you guys might say, oh, I think I see how we can solve for r, right? Um, if you move this guy over to the right-hand side, um, you get r squared is equal to two r sine theta and now you get r is equal to two sine theta. And this is actually the equation of this full circle right here. So, and again, when we draw rays from a region, uh, when we draw rays from uh, the origin through a region, you see that we're gonna hit this full circle on the inside first, and then we're gonna leave by hitting the semicircle on the outside. So, okay, so my upper bound was two, that's good. Uh, that's the semicircle on the outside. Semicircle radius two, r equals two. And then the inside we just solve for is r equals two sine theta. All right. So now, um, now what? Now I need to find my theta bounds, d theta bounds. Well, since I'm in the positive y part, right? I'm in the upper half of the x y plane. I'm gonna go from uh, here, uh, theta equals zero, and I'm gonna swing around to uh, theta equals pi over here. So my outer bounds are gonna be from zero to pi. And now I have something to integrate. Right? I have this integral to integrate. And uh, how do I do this integral? Well, like you always do, this is r cubed over three, evaluator from two sine theta to two, and then we have d theta, All right? And now that's going to be equal to eight thirds uh, minus uh, eight sine cubed theta over uh, three, and then zero pi and d theta. So I'm actually gonna factor out an eight thirds to make this a little easier. You get one minus sine cubed theta, d theta now. And remember how you, so so. let's actually write this then as two separate integrals um, minus eight thirds times zero to pi, 
right, and this d theta um, of sine cube theta d theta, whatever. okay? So I split this integral up into two integrals, um, remembering the fact that the eighth third is a constant, so it needs to be distributed among both integrals here. And then, um, or you could have written like eight thirds times that guy, uh, whatever, uh, whatever floats your boat. As long as you remember you have an eight thirds. Okay, so this first guy is really easy because um, this in first integral is just pi. And then the second integral, um, what is it gonna be? Well, remember, uh, how to integrate trig terms like this. You get sine theta times one minus cosine squared theta, which is another trig identity, right? Sine squared, right? This is really sine squared theta right here, okay? Which, and then sine times sine squared theta, of course, gets you sine cubed theta. So why, this is why that works. And then, um, so now, so now what? So now you need to let u equal cosine theta du is equal to negative sine theta d theta. So we bring in a negative sign here. We bring a negative sign out in the front. Um, the negative, uh, the negative cancels that negative. The red negative cancels the black negative, right? Essentially. So now I get eight thirds times pi plus the integral. Um, and now cosine at zero, right? What's the cosine at zero? Um, that's one. And uh, what's the cosine at cosine at pi, well, the cosine at pi is negative one, right? Yeah, 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 cosine at pi is negative one. And then the inside is negative sine theta um, times, or, 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 or negative sine theta d theta, this becomes du. And then, because that's what we have here, negative sine theta d theta is du. And then uh, one minus cosine squared becomes one minus u squared. So now uh, this is equal to 8 thirds. Um, you want to flip these integrands because that doesn't make sense. This is pi minus the integral from negative 1 to 1 of 1 minus u, u squared du. And now let's actually integrate this guy. Pi minus, um, this becomes u minus u, or yeah, pi minus um, u uh, minus u cubed over 3 from one to negative one. Okay, and what is that? That is, do, 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 do. did I, did I drop a, I made, it feels like I made a sign mistake somewhere. Oh no. Oh no. Silly sign mistakes, where's my sign mistake? Hmm. Actually, no, I don't, I don't have a sign mistake. It's fine. Okay, cool. Actually, what I worked out on my sheet of paper, I had a sign mistake, but over here, I actually do not have a sign mistake. So that's good. Um, what is this inside? Um, you got one minus a third, so that's two thirds, and then you got negative one plus a third, so that's minus a negative two thirds. Okay, you got pi minus that, and now you got eight thirds on the outside, and that's equal to eight thirds times pi minus four thirds. All right. And is that is that it? Yeah, that's 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 more or less the correct answer. Um, you can write this out eight thirds pi minus 32 ninths. Um, whatever, whatever floats your boat. I mean, uh, that's the correct answer right here. So and that's going to be the evaluation of this integral x squared plus y squared, the square root of that da. Um, the valuation of this integral ends up equaling this guy down here. And so what were the important steps in this video? Um, the important steps were uh, knowing this substitution up here, um, x is equal to r cosine theta, y is r sine theta. And it's also important to remember that then dx dy um, ends up being r dr d theta and not just dr d theta, okay? So don't forget the r um, in green here, right? So dA becomes r dr d theta, okay? I, I, I keep on repeating this because it's super important. And then we drew the region, uh, which is the next step. Um, after that, we found the bounds and we converted a Cartesian uh, equation of a circle into a polar equation. So this part down here is also important as well. Um, this part right here is also important. And then 
let's just start these guys because um, I'll, I'll have these notes online um, with these videos and then uh, down here is just integration don't fuck up the, the signs and yeah you get your answer so that's it for polar um, and next section 15.5 is triple integrals whoa wow we're on triple integrals already and so I'll see you guys in that video um, should be a short maybe one or two videos won't be too long and we'll jump right in